Okay, uh, day one. This is going to be your PowerPoint notes uh, 11.1. Uh, today we are starting to talk about mountains. What are mountain ranges? Second, where are they located? And how did they form? And finally, what type of mountain are they? Okay, major mountain ranges. Okay, now um, kind of looking at your map that we did a couple months back, um, this is kind of just a general overview. A mountain is, by definition, a really high point in comparison to land around it. Okay, so looking at our map here, we have major mountain ranges. Again, major mountain ranges. Okay, here on the west coast of the United States, Hollywood would be like right about here. Starting up in Alaska, coming down, we have the Rocky Mountains, and this labeled right here, okay? And over here on the East Coast, near a passive boundary, we have the Appalachian Mountains. Down here in South America, we have the Andes Mountains. Over here um, in Europe, we have the Alps. We just ended up watching a video about these. Um, in Europe, we have the Ural Mountains. These are basically the big uh, division between Asia and Europe. Uh, for those World War II buffs, basically uh, when the Germans decided to come this way, um, all the major factories and stuff were around Moscow right here. The uh, Soviets decided to move them on the other side of the mountains and make it that much harder. Okay, Here, down here, we have the Himalayas. And this is the world's largest mountain range, with the um, largest mountain being Mount Everest. Okay, moving on. Mountains and plate boundaries. Okay, remember the Ring of Fire? Uh, uh, yes, I do, Mr. Franta. Yes, the Ring of Fire, that lovely Johnny Cash song. Um, all these lines right here. And here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and all around here, that's where we have volcanic activity. And these little things floating here, and here, and here, these are examples of the different plates that we had. We learned about these about two units ago. Now, you have sometimes, like in the Atlantic Ocean, you have this plate and this plate, which are um, spreading away from each other, and you have the volcanic activity coming up, creating new land, okay? And then you have areas where the volcanic activity is right here, especially up here towards Washington. The two plates are coming together, but you have volcanoes. Oh, what do we have here? We have South America and the lovely Pacific Plate. Okay, so... For this lesson, we're going to be using the letters O and C. C stands for continental, um, so basically land. O stands for ocean, basically water-covered plates. Um, here in the Andes Mountains, this is an example of where the ocean plate is coming together with the continental plate. The denser oceanic plate is subducting underneath uh, the continental plate, and the re result is a lovely mountain chain known as the Andes. The Andes Mountains in South America are the world's longest mountain range. It is an OC boundary. The Nazca Plate is subducting under the South American Plate. Ooh, what do we have here? In this example, we have the ocean here, and we have our little trench, which is located right near the um, intersection between the two plates, you can see that the uh, ocean plate is coming under or subducting under the continental plate right here. We have volcanic activity right here, and we have our flume, and it's creating mountains right here. The dense ocean crust is forced under the continental crust. The crust melts, and the magma rises to form volcanic mountain ranges. As I was mentioning before, one of the best known examples is the Cascade Mountains of the west coast of the United States. Looking over here, you have the Pacific Plate, which is coming um, this direction. The North American Plate is pushing this direction. 
the Pacific plate is going underneath the North American plate. Um, the one plate is melting, and basically where you have the different holes in the ground, um, volcanic uh, lava is popping up. Um, as we mentioned before when we were talking about volcano, one of the better known examples was Mount St. Helens. And this is right around here. Moving on, the Himalayan mountains. This is going to be an example of where uh, one continental crust meets another. It's going to be a sea on sea collision. Uh, millions and millions and millions of years ago, uh, India used to be located down by Australia or towards south, um, the lower part of the world. As India ventured northward, it came up, came up, came up, came up, and boom! It ran into the Eurasian plate. There used to be an ocean between here, right here, and that was filled in, okay? And when the two um, continents came together, they were the same density for the most part, and they started to pile on top of each other. Again, that is an example of sea on sea collision. The Aleutian Islands. This would be the long chain of islands, which kind of come down here. This is Alaska, the northernmost territory state in uh, the United States. This would be Russia, okay? And if you notice right here, they're about 90 miles apart, but there's a long chain basically that comes over here. And if you are at the very farthest island on the Aleutian chain, you're actually closer to Tokyo than you are to Washington, D.C. The older, denser uh, ocean plate sinks or subducts under the younger North American plate at the Bering Sea. This area right here is the Bering Sea. The ocean floor sinks into the mantle and melts and is recycled. A chain of volcanic islands forms. Around the Pacific Ocean, we have that ring of fire. The Pacific plate is subducting or moving under the volcanic mountains are forming. Okay, so you kind of look up here, just kind of zoom in on it. Whoa! We have our Aleutian uh, Trench, and basically that's where the mountains are forming. Okay, over here in Japan, we have the rise, and that's where the islands are there. And we can see the Manila Trench. Remember, uh, the Mariana Trench is located right over here. That's where it's the deepest hole or trench um, on Earth. You have that really heavy um, plate that went under, and all the other land came up, or is riding on top of it. Okay. Zooming out again, we have islands and seamount. The this islands is, are being formed okay. by the hot spots, like Hawaii. This is an example of like Hawaii. Basically, you have the middle of the plate, but there's different holes as you move along. The plate moving, 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 and the volcano action. Think of this as like that ketchup bottle, spews up. When it hits the surface, it solidifies, forms land. You get enough, it begins to pop up, 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 above the water level, and boom, you got an island. Moves this way, you get an island, an island, an island with mountains, then they start to dissipate, but your biggest one and newest one are gonna be near that volcano vent. As the Pacific Plate moves northwest, northwest, a new volcanic island mountain forms over the hotspot. That's why Hawaii has several islands. This is why Hawaii has several islands. The Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains are not near plate boundaries. How did they get there? Want me to show the video? Hmm? Want me to show the video? Yes, let's show the video. Picture this, your next trip, Utah, five national parks, Zion, Bryce, Capitol Reef, Canyonlands, and Arches, the Mighty Five, plan your trip at visitutah.com. On our journey south along the Rocky Mountains, we're entering a very different landscape. From Montana southward, the Rockies are made from ancient granite, 1.7 billion years old. 
granite makes up much of the deepest part of the continental crust. That's why geologists call this rock the basement. The Canadian Rockies are built from sedimentary rocks piled up on top of the continental foundations. So why does granite suddenly appear here in the American Rockies? But there's an even greater puzzle. Mountains usually form close to plate boundaries, but the southern Rockies sit a long way from the plate margin. The front range in Colorado is a thousand miles from where the Pacific and North American plates actually meet. Geologists have come up with an explanation. They believe that the subducting Pacific Ocean plate is responsible. Ocean crust had been pushed deep into the mantle beneath North America for a hundred million years when something unusual happened. Plates started to subduct at a shallower angle. Instead of plummeting steeply, it sliced beneath North America horizontally. This change had dramatic consequences. The big oceanic plate in the Pacific didn't go deep down, it went in shallow like a spatula under a pizza. So something happened 68 million years ago over in California, that plate dries under North America, but instead of diving deeply, it comes in shallow and a thousand miles away from the coast, up from the ground sprout the Rocky Mountains. For millions of years, the ocean plate scraped along the underside of North America. It created friction, breaking up the basement granite of the North American plate and punching it upward. Structural geologist Carl Karlstrom demonstrates. Because it was at a shallower angle beneath North America, it was scraping along the base of North America. When that happens, it puts the plate under compression like this, because it's being both pushed at the end and uh, scraped along the bottom. So it squeezes, pushes up the mountains, and it transferred this mountain building from the edge to great distance from the plate margin. The shallow angle trajectory of the Pacific Ocean plate explains why these mountains formed so far inland. And it also explains the presence of granite. Thrust up through layers of sedimentary rock, the broken granite became the Rocky Mountains of the South. Red Rocks Park, Denver, Colorado. A landscape forged by granite uplift. The granite mountains here have been pushed up four miles. On top of the granite lie spectacular red slabs of rock known as flat irons. They're the patchwork remains of sedimentary rock that once blanketed the entire granite basement. Kirk Johnson demonstrates how these granite peaks punched up through the layers of red rock around them. I'm going to use my assistants, Veronica and Ian, to help me explain how the Rocky Mountains in Colorado formed. Imagine, if you will, that Veronica and Ian are composed of 1.7 billion year old metamorphic rocks, the basement rock of Colorado. Before the mountains grew, layers of sedimentary rock covered the granite. And then about 68 million years ago, the mountains where Ian is starts to break and lift up and move up. So you see the uplift forming. What's happening is that layer of sediments being formed is bent. And these are the flat irons at red rocks. As the mountain comes up, overlying sediments are eroded off and deposited into the adjacent basin, and eventually Ian's granitic back is exposed as the core of the Rocky Mountains. Veronica remains deeply buried beneath Denver, still covered with deep sediments, and the sediments eroded off the uplifting Rocky Mountains. 